Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our second day of Camp Explore Stop Motion Animation with Johnny Parks. Uh, just before we begin, a few items. When we complete the third workshop in the series, we will be uploading video to our website. It is under our video and podcast gallery. The youth box is what you want to click in order to access the material. So you can review what you've learned or learn something new again. Also, when you ask a question, and this is for everybody who's here live today, please make sure you almost eat the microphone or as was explained to me, the shush principle, two fingers away from the microphone as you're speaking. We librarians, we don't shush anybody anymore. So that's kind of old school, but anyway, that's how far <laughs> I need you to be. And if for some reason you're not at the microphone, give us time, either Taisha, Johnny or I will repeat your question. So those who are viewing later or working from home can hear your question as well. Also, I just would like all hands up. Today is a day we are using your devices. So if you don't have a device here on site, raise your hand. I do have an, a couple extra iPads I can loan out for today's program. And at home, if you wanna run and get your device, you'll need that today as well. Thank you, and here's John. Hello, everybody, welcome back. Glad to see pretty much everyone's here. If I think everyone is here, that's fantastic. So um, yeah, thank you for coming back. We have another exciting class. Today we're gonna get much more in depth with the actual animation process itself rather than learning about it. So I'm sure you guys are very happy to hear that. So uh, thank you for the introduction, Margaret. Uh, so as Margaret mentioned that there is an email address, which is my company's website. Um, it's whataproductionstudio at gmail.com. And I'm gonna make sure you guys all get that by the end of class. If you don't have that in an email, please just come up and I'm gonna write it down for everybody, okay? Because I really want to see all of your animations. I know they're great from the few that I saw. And I would like to make a, a compilation video of all your animations and put them together, which you're going to see tomorrow how I, how I did it with other classes. And I've done it with every single class I've ever taught. And I want you guys to be the latest edition. Okay. All right. So today what we're going to be learning is storyboarding. Can I have a show of hands if you know what a storyboard is? Okay, cool. A lot of you guys do. Some of you don't, but we're going to learn right now. So let me just, all right, if we could have the overhead. David, if we could just have the overhead for a sec, please. Okay. So. Okay, well, storyboard is, we're gonna to try to get on the big screen in a minute, but for now, I'm just gonna hold it up so everybody can see. So storyboard is, and this is done by all the professional animators, they have to, because they're working with the team, right? The person who is drawing what's gonna happen usually is not the same person that's actually animating. So you start with a piece of paper. Did you guys all get a storyboard thing? Show of hands, does anybody not have one? Great, awesome job. Thank you, Margaret, again, just amazing. All right, so when I was doing Wound Up, which we're gonna watch today, What the Mouse and any, any major production, it takes so long to animate a stop motion film that you want to have an idea that comes from your head and on a piece of paper, or you can do it on an iPad or tablet, what have you. But I do it um, on paper. So I'm old school like that, but it's still the, the most um, well-known way of doing it. And it's still used today by animators. So I'm gonna show you on the screen right now. Make sure we got that up here. Can you guys all see that? Okay, cool. So, just gonna jump right into this. So 
I'm going to read my storyboard and then um, I'm going to tell you how that'll give you an idea of how the animation that I already set up the clay for is going to go. But okay, so frame one, you can see it just lets you know that there's an empty table. So right below the squares is where you write the action or what's happening in that scene. So in this instance, I wrote empty table. So you see over here, just an empty table, there's nothing. And you, I would also wanna mention that so I, I've had a lot of students say, oh, I can't do a storyboard, I can't draw. Um, you know, it's like, it does not matter. You do not need to know how to draw. Look at mine. So as long as it's enough to give you an image of what you wanna do and you understand it, if you're the one animating, that's all that matters. And there's a lot of people that say, oh, I'm not an artist. I'm not good at anything. Believe me, you guys are all artists. That's something I want you to have in your head at all times. You're an artist at something. Maybe it's not drawing, maybe it's not animating, but you're an artist at something. That's just something that I always say because it's true. You guys, you know, maybe it's nothing to do with multimedia or cameras or whatever, but you do have some sort of an artistic ability that will help you with stop motion. You just have to find it. I'm a very strong believer of that because it's true. Okay, so frame number two. Hand comes from frame left. That means it comes from the left of the screen. Uh, hand goes flat. Then in number three, we have hand lifts up, revealing the taco shell flattened. So my hand is going to be in the animation on purpose for a specific effect. So number four, the hand closes and opens up again places the beef in the taco shell. Now this is something you could do. Um, if you're gonna keep repeating the same exact thing, you don't have to draw it out every time. For example, if you see below the top four frames, I wrote repeat step four with lettuce, tomatoes, and cheese. It's about making a taco. Since it's Wednesday, you know, Taco Tuesday, I made Taco Wednesday is the title of this. So hand leaves the frame left, right where, from where it came in. The taco folds, up by itself and the, the frame is going to hold for two seconds then the animation ends. Now it's a very simple, very simple animation, but you're going to learn a few different techniques while I'm doing so. Okay. So before we actually go right into that animation, what I would like to show you is some past um, animations that I have made before. So I want to show you the animation first, because I was debating, should I show you the storyboard, then the animation? I think it's It'll have a better impact maybe to show you the animation first and then what went into it. What was going on in my head and how I put it on paper and then made the animation come to life. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this guy. There should be audio to this. One second, please. Okay, I got it. So I'm just putting it on loop so you guys. It's also something I wanna note real quick. You can see that when the duck reindeer is coming, when it starts sliding, it slowly starts speeding up, right? It doesn't just go like that, right? It kind of goes slows down, right? That is um, called ease in and ease out. Cause, cause as you know, as humans, we don't just walk like robots, right? We don't, we don't do that. We, you know, we are here and it slows startly um, to accelerate and then decelerate. So there's, there's a um, gradual movement. So nothing looks robotic in an animation. It's called the ease in and ease out, which I'm going to show you live when we're doing the, the taco video. Okay, so how did we get the idea for the duck reindeer? This is what I did. So here is the exact storyboard that I used. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so as you can see in the actual animation, it starts off with a black screen and ends with a black screen. That's an intro and an outro, how it begins and how it ends. Okay. So, and if you also notice it starts black and white and as the duck comes closer to you, just as a little visual effect to make it that much more interesting, the saturation or color 
comes into play. So you have to figure that all out ahead of time and then make it come to life. So you guys kind of all understand the, the point of a storyboard? Yes? Okay, hopefully you guys at home do as well. If you have any questions, just put it in the chat box and I'd be glad to answer it when I do have a uh, question session right after the end of the storyboard part. Okay, so it starts off black and white and it's out of focus. Duck comes forward towards the camera. Duck spins and comes into focus. Duck continues to spin on as scene becomes colored. Duck spins to a stop. So what I did here is a little tricky technique, which is something you guys can do with Stop Motion Studio, just as easy as Dragon Frame. And I could show you how. Um, so I put repeat the frames four, three, two, one in reverse order, and then just looped it. So it never ends. It, it looks what they call seamless, meaning it's not obvious where it starts and where it, where it stops. Okay, and then the splash screen at the end which I took that out for this. Um, it was originally there when I uploaded it to social media, but I took it out for the point of this lesson. Okay, so we're gonna watch another one. Real simple. Okay, now we are gonna watch or look at the storyboard. This one's even more simple. So we had the starting position of what looking right at us, what looks to the left, frame three, hold frame for a couple of frames, head looks up, hold frame for a couple of frames, looks to the right, the end, loop and repeat. So it just keeps going. So that's one of the more simple ones. Now we're gonna take a look at one with a little more complexity, a little more complicated to animate. Now we're going to go to the storyboard. Now I want you guys to notice in this one, it wasn't just the subject moving, right? Like we had the reindeer duck, right? We had what, and that was it. So to make your animation a little more interesting, you add an accessory, meaning something that's not your character. It's, it's something that goes with your character to complement the scene and make it more interesting, like I said. So the dump truck, it's really small for me on that. Dump truck enters scene. From right from frame, truck moves forward, truck slows down a couple of stops, truck slowly drives in reverse and straightens up. Camera zooms in close. That was a different lens too. Camera zooms in close, back door rises, puff balls are revealed. Puff balls pour out, camera widens, showing, showing balls too. Back door lowers, truck leaves scene. That's the end. Sorry about my handwriting, because it was if I had to show anybody else this for them to animate, it would look a lot nicer. But this is just something that I did real quick and I have it up here. So I knew what I was going to be animating. But no, my handwriting's not great. So okay. So you can see, like I said, we have the accessory, which would be the balls falling out, right? But we also added sound effects. If you, I'm gonna watch, let you watch the same exact animation, but without any sound. Not as cool, right? Not as interesting. So that's something you could also do with stop motion. Studio, you can add your own sound effects and it makes it that much more interesting. By the way, quick point I want to mention. So you have your pre-production, which is storyboarding. Storyboarding, writing down brainstorm notes, anything you can do to just get that idea that you want to do, okay? 
then you have production, which is actually the part where you're actually filming, right? You're on a film set when you, you're dealing with the whole crew, that's production, the lights, the, the filming, right? And capturing the images. And then there's post-production, meaning after, which is the editing. So when you're editing in your software, adding sound effects, adding light effects that weren't there when you shot it, you're like, oh, we should have done that. So that's all called post-production. So we're gonna, we're not gonna get really into post-production in this course because it is so brief, but that's just something to note, just for you to know. So there's pre-production, production, and post-production. Okay. I like this next one. Okay, so here is the airplane animation. On behalf of the flight crew, thank you for flying with us and have a pleasant day. On behalf of the flight crew, thank you for flying with us and have a pleasant day. Okay, now we are going to the storyboard. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Okay, so. You guys get in the hang of this? Raise your hand if you're understanding the point of a storyboard and how it could be helpful. Okay, cool. So in frame one, it's just the plane. No propeller movement, nothing. It just starts off simple, nothing's moving. Frame two, the propeller starts to slowly spin. And like I said before, the gradual movements, also known as ease in and ease out, it starts off real slow and then it accelerates and starts going fast, right? And it never slows down again. So that was, that was an ease out. Okay, so propeller starts to slowly spin. Propeller starts to spin even faster. Airplane <clears throat> gains momentum and starts to move forward. Airplane accelerates and goes faster. And the same thing as the propeller, right? It starts off slow as the propeller spinning continuously at the same once it reaches its final speed, it stays, right? It's little things like this that make it more interesting and believable. Then the airplane starts off slow and then it speeds up and then it takes off. So it gives you the idea, the illusion of more realism, you know, it's more realistic. So airplane leaves scene quickly, airplane is gone, the end. So there's a lot of different elements. So if you've noticed what I'm doing and every one of these videos is getting a little more complicated and it's building up to a more uh, complete animation. Okay, now I have one more storyboard and animation example for you. I love this one. I did this for the last class that I taught. <laughs> Simple, but effective. Okay. So now we're gonna do the storyboard. Okay. This one's black and white. So monster sees the food ball. Monster walks towards the food. Monster's tongue starts to roll out. Monster's tongue reaches food, monster's tongue rolls back in. I, I misspelled tongue, sorry guys. Monster's tongue is back to the starting position. Monster rolls himself into a ball. Monster rolls to the right, exit in the frame. Okay, I'm sure we're just gonna watch that one more time. You can see it, that one pretty much followed it exactly to a T of what was in the storyboard. Sometimes you make your storyboard. This is a fun thing too. You make your storyboard and you're like, I know what I'm going to do. And then when you actually get it in front of the camera, you're like, well, I don't know, you know, I'm going to do this instead. So it might, it might vary a little bit from, from what you originally thought because new ideas are popping up and that's completely fine to do too. Maybe you like it better. Maybe it was a better idea. Who knows? Okay. So what we're going to do now is go with the overhead camera. And we're gonna look at the pieces for the taco that I made for this animation. Just give it a second to load. Okay. All right. 
So I'm just going to hold it up so you guys can see. Oh, it's just not. Sorry. I'm looking at this screen. Okay. So you guys can see here. This is pretty much a basic taco. No sour cream. So we have the taco shell right here, as in the picture, flattened like it begins, right? We have the lettuce. We have the ground beef. And we have the cheese. And we only have four tomatoes because the truth is when you get a taco, you never get enough tomatoes. I've always felt that. So we have four. Okay, so what we're gonna do, let's just go back to the storyboard real quick. Okay, remember, empty table. So you guys can all see, just take that in for a second. And then we're gonna go to the animation. So. We're gonna take this, leave that there. And now we are going to my camera. So let's get Dragon Train up and running. Okay. So I'm just gonna do this as fast as possible so you guys can see, and I don't wanna bore you because these can take a very long time. But something I did mention, let's see. Okay, something I did mention was that I wanted my hand to be in the scene. If you guys, let me ask you a question. Just raise your hand if you research stop motion on YouTube before you started this class. Okay, cool. So you probably noticed some of them have the hand of somebody making it look like they're doing something. They do that with food a lot. So I wanted to, to imitate that a little bit and do the same thing. Okay, so I am not gonna be, an, you don't wanna animate on something like this because chances are when you're moving, it's gonna start shaking. So I'm gonna do this right on the table and we be very careful. So, so here's the idea. I am looking forward to this one. Okay, so let's follow along with the storyboard. So as planned, there's an empty table, right? So we're just gonna take a couple of frames. Okay, I'm gonna do a frame hold to make it a couple seconds or not a couple seconds, but a little longer. So I'm just gonna do, drag it out a little bit. You can do the same exact thing with Stop Motion Studio as well. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them afterwards. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take questions if anyone has any questions because I know we just went over a lot before we start animating because that's gonna take a while. Okay, so let's go over here. I was wondering how to get like- Do me a favor, could you just talk right into the mic as close okay. as you can go? So Please. I was wondering how to get the onion skin working on like stop motion studio because I haven't been able to do that. I was wondering if I needed to connect my camera first or- uh, Okay, so the question here is in stop motion studio, how do we get the onion skin and feature to show? And- Sam also asked if the camera needed to be connected before you see that. The answer is yes. Oh, all right. Have you tried to connect the camera and then tried onion skinning? Uh, yeah, but I'm having trouble connecting the camera. Right, okay, well that's something that it's, I could definitely it's, help you with it's after. It's the computer, I'm, I'm looking up tutorials to see how to get it to work. Sure. But until then, I guess I'm... Talk a little not closer to the mic, please. But until then, I guess I'm not going to be able to use onion skin. Okay, well, that's something we'll try to figure out after the class, okay? All right. Did that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do we have any questions from home, the remote students? Okay, let's continue. Okie doke. That was a great question, by the way, Sam. Thank you. Okay, so we have our empty frame here. Let's just get back into this. Okay, so now we're gonna introduce the hand, right? So we're gonna bring it in. I'm using that onion skin, see? I can see the last image, I have a little clay on my fingernail. If 
I moved my hand any faster, then the animation would be too fast and wouldn't look good, which it's pretty fast already. So I'm gonna show you what we have already. Let's just go to the out point. See? So look at this, I'm moving my hand away completely, right? So what I could do, I could line it up again. That is the beautiful, the most beautiful thing. I think the feature of stop motion is the onion skin. And without that, this would be very hard. When they originally started doing stop motion in the 1800s, late 1800s, it was called the Humpty Dumpty Circus was the first one that's known up until, I don't know. Um, the 1900s at some point, probably the mids where the, you know, it was all film. So they didn't have a reference. They didn't have onion skin and they were just doing it by remembering. That is a whole different skill set in itself. Okay, so you see, I'm just moving my hand a little forward, right? Remember, if you remember the storyboard, what we're doing, I'm gonna put my hand down, then raise it, and then the taco shell is gonna be there. So maybe one more. I'm gonna hold it in pretty much the same spot. Then I'm gonna go down with my hand. I know I'm going fast because this would take a very long time if, if I wasn't just moving along. So questions, just ask afterwards and I promise I'll answer them. Okay, so right before my hand goes flat. I am going to introduce the taco shell. See what I did there? Going to hold it another frame. Maybe a couple more. Then I'm going to slowly use that gradual movement, right? Make slower movements in the beginning and then faster. So each, uh, my hand's going to be further apart a little bit each time. So now we're at full speed. Okay, so we're gonna review this in a second. And now we're gonna take a couple frames of just the shell. Okay, now I'm just gonna drag that out so it lasts a second. So this is what we have so far, okay? See that subtle effect right there? Just by placing something that wasn't there and covering it up, in this case, it was my hand, gives the illusion that just putting your hand down made it, you know? Okay, so we're gonna continue. Right, so then we have the beef. So that's what we're doing next. So we're gonna continue with the whole hand theme here, right? Like it's like the magical hand making a taco from nothing. Okay. So I'm not actually gonna bring the little meatballs. They're not really gonna be there. I'm just gonna make it look like it's coming out. So maybe one or two at a time, like I'm sprinkling it on, right? Okay, so watch this. Now the hand's gonna come back down. So I'm using that onion skinning just to see about where it's gonna be. So. Let's see. Just trying to think how exactly I'm gonna make my hand movement here. Okay, see, something new came up that wasn't in the storyboard. So I am gonna have it in my hands. Okay, so here we go. Remember we left up, so now we're coming from the side again. Make it a little more interesting. 
So kind of clump it together just a little bit. Okay, here we go. This is so much fun. Okay, so notice that my, it's just my hand, right? Just moving it a little bit at a time. And just for reference for you guys, this is that when you're watching the, the review of when I play the video, this is 24 frames a second. I do not recommend doing that. I recommend you guys starting at around 10 with Stop Motion Studio. I'm gonna start tilting my hand up and I'm gonna tell you what I'm projecting right now. So what I'm gonna do is make it look like they just roll right out of my hand, right in place. It's a little surreal because that really wouldn't happen, right? But it's gonna look like they go down perfectly, watch. Okay, so now it matters with the onion skin, see where my hand was? You can see the ghosted image. So now it's important to line that up as close as possible. It's really hard to get perfect because it's not just a matter of horizontal movements, there's depth. So it's coming towards the camera and that could also be a tricky thing to line up. But anyways, I'm gonna try my best, it's all we can do. So now I'm gonna start rolling the meat out pretty fast too, I don't wanna make it look Subtle, I just want a bam effect and all of a sudden it's on there. So this is where it's gonna start coming on. So some of it, so what I'm trying to do, if you guys have ever made tacos, you kind of put it in the center, then you fold it, same with the burrito, right? So I wanna do one frame with some still in my hand. Maybe flatten that piece of meat right there, okay. Okay, and then these about to fall, so we're gonna place it right at the end of the fingertips. That looks pretty good. And now all of it's gonna be on. Just trying to move right along here. And then put my hand exactly where it was or a very similar location. Somewhere right about there. Oh. And remember, you guys, when you make a frame, when you take a picture and capture a frame, if you don't like what you just did, just delete that frame and do it again. It's very forgiven as long as you catch it at that point. You don't want to do that 20 steps forward and try to go back. That's a nightmare. Take it from me. Okay, so now the hand's going to just stay there for a second. So all the meat is on the taco shell. Pulling my hand back now. I want this one to just be a quick hand movement so it's gonna go away real fast. Not gradual, just being yanked away. Maybe one more with the fingertips, the end. I'm gonna show you guys what we have so far, okay? Not bad. Okay, you guys are all understanding this so far? Okay, awesome. See some happy faces, that's awesome. Okay. So we're gonna take that last frame, we're just gonna hold it. 
give it a little space and time in there. Oh, no, I'm not, because I didn't get a, see, need a boo-boo. So now I need a picture without my hand there. And that we are gonna hold. Otherwise it'd just be my hand not doing anything, just sitting there. Okay, so now let's watch one more time. Okay, cool. Moving on. So now we're going to do the same with the lettuce, tomatoes, and the cheese, right? Okay, so this is why I didn't draw this out. It would just be a little redundant just to draw it, just to draw it. You don't need to. You know that you're going to be doing the same thing. So whatever makes it easier for you, the animator. So like I said, again, though, if you're doing this for someone else, which, you know, on a major production, very rarely is the person animating the person storyboarding. So, yeah. So they do need a more specific, better drawn everything to make sure that the vision is transferred. Okay, so here comes the lettuce now. Now, I don't want to come from the left again because we already did that, right? So the hand came from the top. Then we came from the left. Well, we came from the left, then went down with it, but left exited going up. So on this part, we're gonna go a different direction than we've done so far. So what we're gonna do is switch things up a bit. We're coming from the right now, I'm gonna use my other hand. So lettuce has to come in. Get the shadow out of the way. Shadow out of the way there, okay. So here we go with the lettuce. I'm going to come from an angle in the back. I just don't want to shadow. Always be careful with shadows. That'll, that could kind of ruin your scene sometimes and then realize your shadow is in it the whole time showing you how you did it. So, okay, that looks good. So I'm coming from the right. I've decided that now. And then watch what I do here. So I'm gonna have, just to give it a little bit of variation, a little different uh, way of shooting, you know, different angle from the other ones to make it more interesting. I'm gonna come in with it, my hand flattened this time. Okay, so I'm coming to the shell, right? I'm gonna start curving my hand up just a little bit and now I'm gonna make more subtle movements. Meaning not as noticeable, the more every frame is more consistent now. So I'm coming up. Well, see, we're gonna delete that because a piece of lettuce fell. I'm gonna put it right back. Frame never happened, see that? So come up a little bit. Okay, that's good, I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna have the lettuce look like it just rolls right on, okay? So this is gonna take a little, little longer here. So now the clay is just gonna start rolling out a little bit at a time. I don't want my hand moving too much. And then when see it's coming off my hand as a big clump, but then I'm gonna have it separate as it goes onto the taco. One more like that. Let's 
widget. Now it's going to start rolling right on. I'm going to start from this side. It's tricky because it wants to fall, right? Okay, let's put our hand back kind of where it was, somewhere along those lines. There we go. So now we have one piece of lettuce on there. And I'm gonna take this piece and just push it on just a little bit further. Oh, line up the hand again with our handy dandy onion skinning. Two pieces of lettuce. Let's go for a third. Movement here. It's okay. Kind of have to have it stick to my hand because when I'm raising it up, it just wants to go. Okay, and last but not least, the last piece. So we're gonna keep our hand consistent to where it was or approximately, it's not gonna be perfect, that's okay. And there you have it. So I'm gonna take one more frame just like that. Now I'm gonna start pulling my hand away, right? Keeping with the consistent uh, way of hand comes in, hand comes out. Every single time, just in a different direction in a different way. Then we're going to watch what we have so far. You want to keep watching what you have so far. I don't recommend animating, keep going and going, and then at the end say, what did I have? And then you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. When you could fix things, you have the, it's a beautiful thing about being digital, you know, not using the film, it's forgiven. So let's take a look at what we have so far. Okay. Short plan. See? Thank you. Okay. Right at the end of this animation, we'll be taking questions too. Same for you remote students at home. Okay, so pretty sure you guys got the swing of this so far. So I'm just gonna stick to it. Now this time, what have we not done, right? Okay. Just for, I just wanna make a note. When I'm using the capture of my animation, this is the official Dragon Frame pad. But if you're doing this, and this also works with Sat Motion Studio, of course, you could just use any generic numbers pad. You could also do it on your keyboard. So use the numbers pad. You could uh, program little custom keys for everything, like a button, the loop, whatever you set it to, take, take a picture, take five frames. It's very customizable. Okay, moving on. So now come the tomatoes. Let's see. Does anybody have a su suggestion where these tomatoes should come from? Lucas. The top, okay. Let's do it. So here come the tomatoes. Get my arm shadow in there. So I'm gonna make a sprinkle effect, the illusion of sprinkling. I only have one in my hand right now, but watch this. So now I'm gonna have the tomato exposed a little bit more in my fingers so you can see it. Just turn it a little bit. And I wanna keep my hand to give this little surreal effect here, you know, to not go too close. I wanna make it look like it's actually sprinkling from my fingertips, like it's raining tomatoes. So I'm gonna just kind of hold it. 
maybe a little bit of movement, rest someone between the fingertips. Now, I'm gonna take my other hand, and just lower that tomato a little bit. So now it's really showing, but the fingers are lined up again. Remember, close, but not perfect. That is fine. Nothing is perfect. So now it's gonna fall. So I'm gonna put my hand down. All right, come back up with it. Move it a little bit. Okay, now here's another tomato. It's like a little magic trick here. So I'm just gonna pinch it, get a little tomato-y shape. And now another one. And I want this to be real quick, so it's not just like hand shaking a bunch, then a tomato comes, I just want it to be kind of constant. So now I'm gonna put the tomato right there. There's our second tomato. And I'm not gonna show the third tomato yet. I don't think that would look as realistic, but still a little movement on the fingertips. Okay, so here comes the third tomato. And the next frame is gonna be down. You could get really fancy like we discussed yesterday, how you can rig something and make it look like it's floating by itself. But for the sake of just a quick, simple animation to show you guys, this will work great. So I'm gonna put my hand down. All three tomatoes are there. And then take it without the tomato man. Watch this. A little more shaking. Then it's gonna, my hand's gonna leave frame right where it came in. And Lucas, that was a great suggestion, by the way. So we're gonna review this every step along the way. So now we're gonna do the tomatoes come in. We're gonna take a frame with no hand in the way. And let's see what we have. Oh. Not bad. Okay. Okay, cool. That's what I was going for. I'm liking it so far. So we're gonna just hold that frame for a little bit longer. So let's just watch that one more time. Just wanna see the space. Of cool. Thanks guys. Okay. So last but not least, the cheese. The most unhealthy part about this. So it's kind of the same sprinkling effect, but we just went from the top. So I think we're gonna go a little different direction with it this time. So I'm actually gonna start right in front of the camera, bring it back and sprinkle it. As my hand is over it, it's gonna be released and then I'm gonna continue the hand movement. Okay, so we're gonna start. A little bit trickier, but we're gonna do it. Don't be afraid to try new things. This is, this whole animation is different than anything I've done. Okay, so we're just going back with it a little bit. Now we're almost over. So I'm gonna have my hand flip and actually, this time I'm not gonna have it sprinkle, I'm just gonna pour it on. But I think if I do this fast, this will have a cool effect. Okay, so now I'm really gonna press this in my hand so when I go upside down, it doesn't fall out. If it does, it does. Then we'll just fix it, but which I, it probably will actually.
tricky. Okay, so now we're gonna go for the flip. So now the cheese is going on. Make sure it shows up in frame because sometimes you're looking at, for example, your subject. So I'm looking at the taco and I could see it perfect, but you gotta remember the, the lens is not a completely different um, angle than I'm actually looking at it. So always refer to your monitor. So let's see, I think we should have our hand down. Good, okay, so now we're quickly gonna take the hand off. But we're not going up with it, we're just going to the, the background. In other words, I'm just sliding it along the table. Okay, let's do two more and then no hand. All right, so let's take a look at what we have so far. I'm only have one more step left. Let me just see something real quick. I think that worked. Yeah, cool. All right, so now we're just gonna hold that frame for a little longer. Okay, and now it's gonna fold itself up, right? According to the storyboard. So let's do it. So this is a little trickier than it sounds. Cause it's go it wants to stick to the table. Just trust me on that. So we are gonna use a little tool. We're going to also add a little bit of, because when you look at a taco shell, right? It's like usually corn, right? And it's got a little bit of texture to it. So we're going to make that only as it folds up, though. Little subtle details like that just make it look cooler. Okay. So I'm actually going to hold that a little longer. I think there's shit for pacing purposes. Okay. So let's see, 24 frames a second. Let's do. So two seconds spacing, which is 24, so it'd be 48, right? Okay. So now it's gonna fold up itself. So we're just gonna take this little scraper tool. I'm gonna turn off the onion skinning because sometimes that could distract you actually. Turn on just a little bit. Now, I don't want to just fold up the whole thing, so I need to. This is where it gets a little trickier. So I'm going to hold part of it down with one tool and with the other tool, and you could also use your pencils as well. Just kind of hold it down a little bit flat so it doesn't move. Actually, I'm going to use this thing because I don't really want to shake up the vegetables too much. Just want just a little bit of a curl. So like I said before, just starts off slow, gradually gets more movement. And I'm gonna worry about the other side just yet. So real subtle, you guys can see, watch, I'm gonna turn off the onion skinning. See that? So we know we have to turn it a little bit, right? Good yeah. enough. Let me move that little piece of meat. There we go. Okay. So you could also just toggle between the last picture that you took and the current picture to kind of see the exact difference between them. 
That looks pretty good to me. So we're going to take that picture. Okay. We're just going to repeat that. The tricky thing is that the whole thing wants to move. So we're just going to ground it on the other side that's hidden. So you're not going to see the impression that it's making in the clay. Okay. Then we're going to bring it to this side. Carefully just fold up the taco shell just a little bit more. Then we're just going to spin it right back. This is where the onion skin, and once again, is very helpful. Maybe just push that meat back a little bit. Okay. Now we started slow, right? So now it's just gonna roll right up. Try something different, use this tool this time by itself. All right, it's tricky. Don't be afraid to try new, new methods. Oh, I got the tools in here. So, yep, we're going to delete that, get the tools out of the way. Okay. See, the tricky part is not to put your hand down and squash all the vegetables on the taco. Because that could take away from the uh, the final effect here. So we're just going to bring it up a little quicker now. So that was a much bigger move there. Oh. Keep forgetting the tools. <laughs> so now we're just rolling it up. Movement or no movement. Okay. okay. Now we're going to do our final little fold right here. Make it actually look like a taco. And just one little, <clears throat> excuse me, one more little pinch right there. So that's our final taco fold. So now we're just going to hold it for a couple of frames. Because the whole taco fold is, I believe, six frames. It's a very fast movement. Okay, now we're going to do something cool, kind of random. It just came to me. We're going to just like we did with the monster earlier, we're gonna fold it up into a ball and it's gonna roll away. Just something fun. So we're gonna hold that a little longer than expected. Right there. Say, mm, I think one second works. So we'll go with 24, seeing this is a very fast animation. Okay, so now it's gonna be rolling itself into a ball. So we're just gonna start from the ends. I'm gonna press down the middle. I'm just gonna squash all the clay together. I'm gonna start off a little slower. Okay. I'm happy with that. And just continue that and just keep rolling it up a little bit more. Remember, I don't want to just squash it all in one step or it'll be too sudden. See that taco? It's like morphing. Okay, I like that. So much more gradual movements now. But I'm continuing it to fold it from the side so it looks consistent with the other shots. A 
little more. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna do our final roll. Roll up, should I say, and then we're gonna roll away. Because remember the bottom's still flat. Something to take note of. Okay, as we wrap this up. Okay. We're to that point now, so we're gonna start squashing it. And what we're actually doing is <clears throat> rounding off the bottom as we do this. Perfect, I like that. Okay, so every step along the roll, it's becoming more of a sphere, right? So round on all sides. So it starts off small. I might actually keep the movements very right. similar throughout the roll here. Without much of a ease in or ease out. And right, now we're just gonna roll into a ball. So we have the green on that side. So now we're just going to take this, put it back. Okay. So I do want to get that green kind of sort of where it was. Okay. So wait a minute, we were going back with it. So we're still going that way. Okay. So I don't want to show all those colors, right? So here we go. And then we're just going to roll it away. I would like to note one thing. I did bring another light today. Remember we were talking about lights and the different types? Well, this is the LED and we're gonna go more into that tomorrow, but this is a much warmer color, right? It's a warmer, it's got more reds in it than blue. And then it's, this is also warm lighting, but this is warmer. We'll get into that tomorrow more though. So we're just gonna continue our roll. And that's, then we're gonna do an empty frame of just the table and that's it then you can loop that animation and it'll just never stop. Which I'm gonna show you a loop on it actually. Okay. Maybe one more with just the tippy tip of the table, and then I'm just gonna grab it. Okay, and then we're just gonna hold that frame and I'm gonna show you the completed animation. Let's do one second. 24, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's our final animation. I'm gonna put it on the loop. Okay, so that's a little too fast, right? So what we're gonna do is slow it down. We are gonna now turn it. If you can see, this is Dragon Frame, but it looks exactly the same on Stop Motion Studio. You just have to click the little stopwatch icon and that's your timing. So it's telling you the frame rate right here. 24 FPS means frames per second. So we're gonna actually slow that down to about half. We're gonna go with 12, Let's see how that looks.
I think it's a little slow. Let's go with 15. Just have to let it render. Give me a second. Okay. I think that's good. That's the right speed. It just looks more natural. So let's watch it one more time. And it comes to life itself. Pretty cool, right guys? Cool. So I'm gonna be taking questions now. I'm sure some of you guys have some sort of question. Do we? Margaret. Johnny, I was looking at your specialty tools and um, I was thinking that in, instead of having to go buy something, you could use a scraper from the kitchen, a small dowel, a wooden handle, a spoon handle, a table knife. Are there any other things from the home you could use to um, duplicate what you have in your hands? Sure, absolutely. You could use a plastic knife, uh, one of those, um, what do you call it, disposable plastic utensils. Absolutely, it's a great, great suggestion. You could use just a, a knife. You know, they're not sharp, just a plastic knife. Um, you could also use a pencil, to be honest. You could use a pencil and just kind of, because the whole point of what I was doing was just trying to hold one part down so it didn't come up with it. Literally, you can use anything. I mean, this is just because I had it. A little convenient, but they're um, they're very inexpensive. I think on Amazon the whole kit was like five dollars. It came with like twenty something tools, but you don't have to buy anything. Like Margaret said, you can just use anything from around your house. So yeah, that's yeah. So anything around the house. Yes, Margaret. Um, when you were adjusting the frame speed, can you do that for part of your photos or only all of the the pictures that you have taken at one time? That's a very, very good question, but it's complicated. Okay, so while you're shooting and reviewing it in software, it's one frame rate. So what you would have to do is watch just that part. I'm gonna get a little more complicated here. So if you press I or O, and this applies for stop motion studio as well, I believe, don't hold me to that, but I know there's a way to do it. So for this frame right here with the tacos here, I'm just gonna hit I on my keyboard. And this little yellow thing right here is my in point. So it's going to play from there. And then when you press O, it's your out point. So it's only going to play that part. So now you can do it, change your frame rate. But when you export this, um, see, I do it a different way. I don't ever export the movie itself. I shoot in raw for all you photographers out there and then edit the exposures and then bring it back as single images and then as an image sequence. But for the sake of ease here and just learning, we're not gonna do that. So you, I recommend you guys um, export it as a video file as it is. So it is gonna be just one frame rate. You can view it differently, but if you wanna get into editing, which I do recommend if you wanna continue with this, you could do that in, in post-production and editing software like uh, Final Cut if you're a Mac user, that's only for Mac. Uh, Premiere Pro, you could do it in After Effects, a little more complicated. Uh, iMovie and just change certain parts where it slows down one part, then speeds up. So it's a little more tricky. So for the sake of this, I would just say one speed, Margaret. Okay. Yes, Lucas, want to come up here? Um, can you delete multiple frames? Can you talk closer to the mic, please? I noticed that when I was working, I could only figure out how to delete one frame at a time. Can you delete multiple, multiple, like all at once? Yes, you can. What you do, so the question is from Lucas here, can you delete all your frames at once opposed instead of deleting just one at a time? Yes, you can. So I believe- well, I mean, not all of them, but like just- Multiple, Yeah. sure. So not all of them, but multiple. Yes, you can click one and hold shift on your keyboard and then select the last frame. It'll select just that group. Oh, okay. Or I believe with Stop Motion Studio, I could actually tell you right now, 
to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you can just hold control and click the frames that you want. And it'll, once selected, then just hit delete, it'll delete them all together. All right, thank you. All right, no problem, great question. Anybody else want down here? Yes, Sam. So, I'm having trouble with my camera and like, it says it's having lighting issues, but it's not what you recommend I do. All right, so the, could you say that again? So my camera says it's that there's poor lighting, but there isn't. And I was wondering sure. what do you recommend I do? Well, the question is, is that Sam's computer is telling him that there's a problem with the camera's lighting. No, it's the camera. The camera is saying that there's a problem with the lighting, although there isn't. So what can he do? The answer is I have no idea without looking at it because I'm not familiar with that um, problem. I'm glad to take a look at it after the class. All right. Thank you, Sam. Anybody else? Any questions from home? Okay, fantastic. Great question again, guys. Sorry, I couldn't answer that one right away, Sam. Okay, so that's that. So moving on. Oh, I'm just gonna quickly do something here. Just rendering it out. Give me one moment. Okay. Okay, so moving on while that does that. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So down the dragon. Boom. Okay, so before we watch Wound Up, which I'm gonna get into a sec, I wanna, this is more important. Our fun homework for today. Okay. So everyone, please pay attention to this. This is very, very important. So draw out a storyboard of your own, right? You guys all have storyboard uh, pad pages. If you need more, I have some too. Margaret as well. So draw out a storyboard of your own, just one page, start simple, okay? Build an object out of clay. Animate your object based on the storyboard that you created. So in other words, do you guys all understand that? So make a storyboard, make an object out of clay, and then what you see in the storyboard is what you get for the animation. So try to follow that as close as possible. I'd love to see it. And email, this is, this is the most important part. So email your animation to the following email address. Everybody wants to just write this down real quick, or I can write it for you at the end, but please get this. This is very important because without, Without this, I can't include your animations to the final animation at the end of this, this whole course, which is very important. It means a lot to me to see all of your animations. I don't want to miss out. I know you guys put a lot of time into it, and I know everyone would benefit from seeing it. Okay. So it's what a production studio at gmail.com. That is mine. I will respond to you as soon as I see it um, and compliment you to it. I'm very responsive. Okay. So we only have 15 minutes left. So it's a 15 minute movie that works out great. So this is my first film that I ever made in stop motion for as a short film. It's called Wound Up. And this is the premiere for the revised edition that I just made, actually. So I'm going to show you guys right now. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but if you have questions afterwards, I would love to answer it. Okay. Okay. Here we go.
that was a great class. Thank you guys for participating. I'll hand it over to Margaret. Great, so we have one more day of this workshop. Who knows what will happen? So as you work on all the elements that Johnny gave you today in the program, um, if you have any questions, we have a Q&A at the beginning of tomorrow's session. So if you encounter any programs at home and you want more detail on the methods and the tricks of the trade, please come to your questions at the very beginning. We'll see you all tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Great class. And also, if you have any questions right now, it'd be a great time to ask me. I'm going to stick around for a little bit longer. And uh, Sam, I'm going to try to help you with that issue, okay? Otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow. And like Margaret said, she's going to email you the email address to send the animations to. Please send them. I'd love to see them. All right. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.